Hi, um, this is my first video blog. Um, I'm currently working on the, um, a creative practice masters. I'm not used to blogging, so please bear with me. Um, I've been learning Revit for a little while and I thought I ought to log what I've been doing. Um, and it's so much easier to do it through like a little a walkthrough on screen than by trying to type everything up. Um, so this, this build was um, a build that I did following a tutorial from YouTube um, by Balkan Architect. He's really good at showing beginners and advanced students um, and practitioners step-by-step -step tutorials on builds. Um, so I'll get, I'll get straight in because I say I'm a little bit nervous. I've never done a video blog before. And I'll just show you a look round. So, this is the second Revit build. The first build was the bridge, um, which was also one of the Balkan Architect tutorials. Um, I felt like I wanted to produce a building because I'm, that's more in line with what I want to do for my coursework. And Revit is, is very new to me. I've used SketchUp before, uh, touched on AutoCAD, but I've, I've not used Revit. Um, so, this is a Starbucks cafe. At the moment, we've got it in um, a line work, hidden line setting. So I'm going to walk through just just to show basically that I, I've um, learned and understood different settings and, and how to form a building. And, and we've got like all the different viewpoints here. So I'm just going to talk, talk through all that and then have a look at some of the issues that I've got with the build now that I'm a little bit more experienced. So this is, this was, I did this a couple of months ago. So first of all, we've got like the, the different graphic displays. So we don't want to, to save, it's already saved. So we've got a wireframe, which is quite useful. Um, say if you've got a solid wall and you need to change the shape of it, you need to edit it, or you want to put something into it, you can, you can look through and you can see everything right through the building. So that, that's quite useful. It's a little bit confusing at times, but it, it's quite a useful um, viewpoint. But say, for example, I wanted to do something with this back wall and this door was in the way. It's quite easy to just highlight the door. There's a shortcut which hides it, which is HH. Um, and then HR brings it back. You can, you can go the long route and um, right click it and then hide in view elements and I'll get rid of it as well. Um, let's bring that back. All right, okay, so it's not, come, no, it's not coming back. I'll, I'll have to go back. So, um, so yeah, that's quite useful. Spend quite a lot of time hiding things when I'm trying to look through and, and view things and things are in the way, items are in the way. So that's the wireframe. Hidden line, I tend to use this quite a lot when I'm um, modeling um, you can sort of see everything you just see its form and uh, it's quite clean but well, it's very clean so you can sort of see what's going on you've then got the shaded option which again it is fairly clean it just gives you a little bit more of a 3d um, visual and you can see obviously you've got a few different textures that are that are not just shaders you, you can see you've got glass work in there um, so that's that's quite nice again it's clean and clear and you can see everything that's going on um there's consistent colors which has got similar color and it's just a little bit lighter i don't i don't really um use that one and then we've got realistic so that gives you all your, your textures and your colors that, that you would expect to see um in the modeling phase the textures and the colors don't necessarily look as realistic as you would want on a final render um, but for the purposes of seeing what's where, if it's going to look okay, so perhaps, you know, say if, if you've got like that green is, is the right shade of green, it gives you quite a good idea. Um, but the final renders come out much, much better than that. So <clears throat> we've got on this build, we've got a lot of things going on, we've got quite a lot of detail. Um, so we've got internal lights, we've got a uh, nice 3D text here on the side of the building attached to the glass. 
we've got um, the kitchen area behind the, the this wall and these doors, and then we've got all the dining area, so we've got all the seating. Um, the building itself is not a regular box, it's um, it's sort of an unorthodox shape. As you can see it, it curves round, which was quite interesting to model. Um, and then we've got some exterior lighting, we've got street lights onto the car park. And we've got some floodlights somewhere, which I can't see at the moment. There we go, it's just catching up. So, um, if we go into floor plans, um, we've got the ground level plan. Again, with these graphic settings, you can have the uh, wireframe hidden line. You can do the same sort of thing. So if I put that onto shaded, you can see, put it on there, it's, it's shaded and realistic. And you can see your colours. Uh, I quite like it on hidden line because when you when you're modelling and you're modelling in floor plan, you can um, you can see everything really clearly. The good thing about Revit is whatever you do in your floor plan in a 2D capacity will automatically translate through to your 3D viewpoints here. So if I were to say um, let's have a look, let's put a wall in, just just a random wall, let's just put a wall here. Look. So that goes on to there, and if I go into my 3D view, you can see that we have a wall just there. So it automatically puts it into the 3D view. Let's delete that because I don't want that on there. Um, so that was a ground level, and then we've got level one, which is the roof. You can see on there, put on to realistic view. Um, it's not the roof, it's just the, um, it's below the roof, so the roof's here. So if we put that onto realistic, you can see. So you can see on the roof level, we have, we can't see the internal dining, but we can see the external dining area. Um, site plan is, is what it says, it's, it shows you where the building is, shape of the building, and obviously the, um, the trees and the car park, everything is on there. Um, You've got visibility boxes which which you can turn on and off. So this this shows you where your viewpoint is. If you were to alter that and bring that in there, then you would lose part of that. So you wouldn't be able to see it. So when you're putting your floor plans together um, onto your worksheets, you can cut this down as much as you need so that you just get in the actual information visible on the sheet. So if we go from there, um, we've got ceiling plans. So you, your ground floor ceiling is here. Let's put that on. So we've got coarse, medium, and fine detail. I always use fine detail so I can see things a little bit clearly. So from your ceiling, you can see you've got your doors here. And this is the one that I'm most interested in because when you come to put internal lights in, they have to be situated from a ceiling, you can't obviously put lights into thin air, so you need to have a ceiling. Um, and then when you go to put your lights in, you have to put them in on the ceiling plan. Um, and then you've got the roof. Again, there's, there's, you can just see the street light tops there. So we've also got some 3D views, which I've used um, when I've rendered out in the final build. Um, so these can be achieved by using the camera, which is uh, up here. So when you're on a 3D model, you set a camera up and you can get um, a different viewpoint, which I'll show you in a second. So there was one, the second viewpoint. It's got a nice perspective view, which is when, you, when you're doing a, a final visual, you want a really nice um, visual of the whole building but you want it to, to be quite dynamic so play around with the cameras and so we've got all the detail and we've got the floodlights so if i were to do a nighttime render you get some nice lighting coming in there um, and then we've got another 3d viewpoint here these are done in um different stylings so that i can alter them later to um to make some really nice renders and to experiment a little bit which there'll be some images on my blog post on um, my WordPress, you'll be able to see what I've done with those. So, if I want to set up um, a new camera, let's just say 
Uh, if I, sorry, if I go into here, set up a camera. Let's just say I want to go from, um, if I want to go from this side and get this side of the uh, of the view, I put my camera here and bring it out across here. You'll see that we've got the opposite side of the cafe. And then I can alter this, I can bring this down so I've got less in there, or I can have more in there. You could have a really, a really sort of squashed along if you wanted. There's not a lot going on over that side, so I'll bring it this side so you get all the car parking. So you, you can basically play around with this. You can also um, use this little um, tool here so you can you can look around. We pan, we can go like this, you can orbit, you can orbit around so you can you can change your viewpoint and, and where the camera's looking from. Uh, I quite I quite like that. So that's just a quick walkthrough of the camera. And then we've got elevations. So the elevations are Uh, I'm just on the camera on there, I'm not really sure why. Um, let's go back to this. It's still on, not to worry. Um, so the elevations give you your side views, so you've got your east, north, south, west, so they give you each viewpoint of each side. And again, these are useful when you're putting together your plans to to say submit to planning departments, etc., etc., um, or building building uh, companies, so they want to see all elevations. So these are all the things that make up um, the information that a builder would need and uh, engineers would need for putting a building together. You wouldn't necessarily have them realistic. You might have them as hidden line. You might have them as shaded. Just depends on on what style um, you want to do them in, and also what planning departments and building construction workers need. Um, so that's all the different viewpoints. I don't think I've got any sheets set up on this. So this is where you would put all your information. Um, so for instance, if I were if I were going to set submit this project. Um, for build, you would have um, your plans on here, so you just drop them in, um, and that's quite quite large. So we'd we'd change the scale of that, so it's smaller. Not the silk there labelled. Then you might want to put um, the west elevation on there. So you can sort of see where this is, this is going. Um, so all the information we put onto these templates really quite easily. And all this is, is you can configure this to your own um, branding and name as well. So this is the Starbuck build. Let me go back to the 3D view and just explain where I'm at now. And it's a very, very quick walk through this. So. On this build, you can see we've got um, we've got the basic build, and one of the problems here is that I've um, I've got a big gap down here. This is because that when I've done the surface, the topography, um, I've done it wrong, basically. So that's been cut out. So that's not right, and it's the same over here as well in the car park. We've got a big a big area here where we've got the topography. And then we've got these big gaps. So what I've done is I've cut these surfaces out of one another instead of um, let me just find it. If I if I go to go to this one, go to edit surface. Um, no, that's the wrong one. Massing, massing and site. So if we go to the topo surface, oh, I've done it wrong anyway. I've I'll cut this bit out. No, 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 we don't to do anything. We quit, yes, we want to quit. Um, so that's not correct. Um, 
other than that, I, f I feel that for a, a first build, it's, it's quite good and it gave me a really good opportunity to learn many, many skills in Revit um, and get a, get a handle on using the tools. So you know, I've learned to put railings in and furniture um, and just, just basically doing a, a build that's a little bit more organic. Um, it also helped me learn about putting levels in. So on here we've got you see these three lines. The setting up is shocking because um, like these are all over. You can't really see them very well. Th these would all be on the opposite side, which is quite easy to achieve. Just swap them around here. Um, so it's, it's just all a bit messy at the moment. I'll just swap those around. Let me see. Get that out there. And the same on the roof. Let's leave the roof for now. So the different levels and this this is sort of the same setup for anything that you're building so you've got your ground level there which my um, building is set above the ground level we've got level one which is the ground level and then we've got the roof so in a standard build you, you just build your levels up for for each height each floor height and that way you can create your floor plans on each level. So the ground level floor plan corresponds to this level here. Level one corresponds to level one, obviously, and the roof corresponds to the top. Um, so that's about it for this. Uh, there will be more videos as I progress through and I'll um, walk through some of the other builds that I've done.